This is the first in a series of videos about acids and bases in solution. We have some assorted properties to cover in this section. We'll talk about polyprotics, the hydrolysis of salts, and the common ion effect. So we'll start with polyprotics. So these are acids and bases that donate multiple protons. And so if the word polyprotics exist, then we can also start by talking about monoprotics. Monoprotics are just what they sound like. They donate or accept a single proton. And you can have monoprotic acids or monoprotic bases. And so we'll give an example reaction for each of those. And we'll use a red star to track where the proton goes. So an example of a monoprotic acid is almost any of the acids we've seen so far. So we can use hydrochloric acid, which is a strong monoprotic acid. And we know that the acid is the one that donates the proton. So the proton is in our acid to begin with and it passes it off to the water so on the product side, the H3O plus has that proton. And most of the bases we know so far are monoprotic. So we'll use ammonia. That's a popular one in this chapter. So that base ionization with water produces ammonium ion and hydroxide. And we know that bases except a proton, so it has a proton in the product side, so that means that the proton came from the other reactant, which is the water. Water had the proton and then it lost it to become hydroxide, and NH3 gained it to become NH4+. So only one proton was exchanged in each of these cases. So this new category that we'll talk about here in brief are called polyprotics, poly meaning multiple. So these acids and bases donate or accept multiple protons. So if it's an acid, it can donate multiple protons, and if it's a base, it can accept multiple protons. And we'll get an example of a polyprotic acid and a polyprotic base. So an example of a polyprotic acid is carbonic acid, which is H2CO3. And so that can hydrolyze in water to release more than one proton. So the first time it releases a proton, it only has one H at the beginning, it becomes HCO3 minus. And H3O plus. And then we can take, uh, we can track the protons. So here there are two acidic protons. And when it forms its conjugate pair, it only has one. So one of those protons was given to water to form H3O plus. And then we can take this compound that has been deprotonated once, and we can donate a second proton. So we can do another acid hydrolysis with that product and donate another proton to make CO3 carbonate. So this bicarbonate still has one proton in it. And when it reaches its conjugate, it doesn't have any protons. That proton has been given over here to the H3O plus. So we go from H2CO3 to HCO3 minus when we donate the first one, and then to CO3 two minus when we donate the second one. So you can follow the progress of the protons as they're passed around. Okay, and then we can give an example of a polyprotic base. And one common example is phosphate. 
And if you take biology, this is relevant to many biological processes, passing these phosphates around. So when we protonate phosphate for the first time, we add an H and its charge goes up to two minus plus hydroxide. So phosphate gained a proton and that proton was donated by the water. We started with phosphate and we formed hydrogen phosphate and then we can add another proton to this compound. When it ionizes in water, we can add a second proton to make dihydrogen phosphate minus. So it starts with one proton, and as it moved into the products, it gained a second proton. And that second proton came from the water. So these two protons became two protons on the same compound. And since there's a negative charge, we can even protonate it one more time. Put it in water and ionize it a third time to make H3PO4, a neutral compound. So there are three possible protonations that can happen. So this would be called a triprotic base. Two protons becomes three protons. And that third proton came from the water. So we had phosphate to hydrogen phosphate, hydrogen phosphate to dihydrogen phosphate, and dihydrogen phosphate to phosphoric acid. So this one is triprotic and up here, carbonate, this is diprotic for two. Okay, so let's just make a quick conclusion about all the stuff that we have just written. So when there's multiple ionizations, we can uh, guess about which one is going to be the strongest, and then we can look it up in a table to confirm. So we know the first ionization step in any process, whether it's an acid or a base, the first one is always the strongest. Meaning it has a larger K. So there's gonna be a K for each of these steps. So there's gonna be a Ka, for each of these acidic steps, and we'll number them starting from the first. So this one would be one, and this one would be two. And for the base, we have Kb1, Kb2, and Kb3, as we add more and more protons to that compound. And we know the values for those K values, the values for the K constants from reference tables, and I've already looked them up. So our Ka1, that first proton donation, the Ka1 is 4.3 10 to the negative seventh. For the donation of the second proton, it's 4.7 times 10 to the negative 11th. And if we compare those two numbers, we know that negative seven is closer to zero than negative 11. So that Ka1 is going to be much larger than our Ka2. There are four orders of magnitude difference between this one. So the first one happens one, uh, 10, 10,000 times more than the second one. So it's much greater than the other. And for the phosphate, the first proton we accept, the Kb1 is 2.4 times 10 to the negative second. When we accept the second proton, our K constant is 1.6, 10 to the negative seven. And for our third proton, it is 1.3, 10 to the negative 12th. And you can see that for each successive proton we accept, the K constant gets smaller and smaller. There's less and less of it that happens. And there's a five and five order of magnitude difference between these two. So five orders of magnitude is 100,000 
So KB1 is 100,000 times larger than KB2, which is 100,000 times larger than KB3. So the first step is always going to be the larger K value, the strongest reaction. So that is the basics of polyprotic systems. In the next video, we will talk about the hydrolysis of salts.